If you're watching this video, chances are there's a referendum coming up. Whether it be the Indigenous Voice to Parliament, or if we should kick King Charles off our coins and become a republic, or if we should submit to the alien overlords that invaded Earth in 2035. But in any case, you're probably going to have to vote. But what actually is a referendum, and why do so many of them fail? Okay, so when the British colonisers united all the Australian states into one official country, a bunch of politicians got together and wrote down all the rules for how the government would work, and importantly, what the government would and would not have power over. And this document is known as the Constitution. Now, we live in a representative democracy, which means that every couple of years we get to vote and pick who we want to represent us in Parliament. And then whichever MP or Senator we choose votes on our behalf for all the individual pesky pieces of legislation. This is because if everyone had to vote on everything, then people kind of wouldn't have time to work or, you know, do actually important things like watch Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. While it might work well enough for regular laws, when it comes to the Constitution, you really don't want the Prime Minister and his MPs to just be able to come along and change that document and suddenly turn themselves into Supreme God Emperor rulers of all time, right? In a very real way, the Constitution is there to make sure politicians can't gain too much power. And that's why it's stipulated that if the government wants to change its wording, they have to get consent from the public. Every eligible Australian has to directly vote on the proposed changes and the majority have to say yes. Well, actually the double majority, but we'll get to that later. Basically, the government has to put on a whole election day voting shebang just for one yes or no question about one policy. That takes a lot of time and money and effort, but it being difficult is kind of the point. There hasn't been a referendum yet this century. In fact, the last one we had was in 1999, and it was Australia deciding if we should kick out the British monarchy and become a republic. Uh, it failed, but I'm sure that will never become acutely relevant again. But a failed referendum's surely the outlier, right? Oh, one second, let me check. Okay, so out of uh, 44 referendums, a whopping eight have passed. Oh yeah, it's notoriously, excruciatingly difficult to have a successful referendum in Australia. And that's got a lot to do with that double majority thing I mentioned earlier. Here's what that means. So first, a referendum needs the majority of the overall voting population of Australia to tick yes on their ballot. Basically, it needs to win the popular vote. But then we have to take each state individually and see how their populations voted. If the majority of the states also ended up with an overall yes result, then the referendum passes. This rule is just low key there to make sure New South Wales and Victoria can't decide every referendum, by the way, because, you know, those two states alone make up 57% of the Australian population. But as a consequence, it means that in theory, if those three dissenting states happen to be Tasmania, South Australia and Western Australia, then potentially less than 3 million people voting no can kill an otherwise wildly popular change to the constitution. Ironically, the only way to change that would technically be through referendum. So now you know how the system works, it's time to start doing your research and carefully considering both sides of the argument before preparing to submit to our new alien overlords. Hail Zorch.